Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about what is a performance testing lifecycle and you must get this question in one of your interviews. So that's the reason I'm taking you through this podcast. So this will be very interesting and um, you might get this question to I mean, the interviewers if they want to to know or if they want to understand about your experience and expertise in performance testing and also about your knowledge so that could be the reason for asking this question so before we move on to this video this is me Yosan Shanugam I welcome you all to a little slide YouTube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel like share the video with your friends and consider joining the channel so that will help me to create more quality content like this so with no further delays, let's go to the video. Uh, sorry, the podcast. So what is performance testing life cycle? So the performance testing life cycle is the process of planning, executing and evaluating the performance testing to ensure that the software applications meet their performance criteria under anticipated load condition and this performance testing life cycle is crucial for identifying the bottlenecks yeah so that's the reason that's the main objective we are running the performance testing and for improving the system performance and to ensure that the applications can handle expected user traffic so i will take you through uh, each and every uh, parts or every phases of the performance testing life cycle. So the first part is the requirements gathering. So what is the objective of requirements gathering? So the objective is to understand the performance requirements and the goals. So what will we do or what do we do during the requirements gathering? So we will identify the performance goals where we define what aspects of performance need to be tested. For example, whether it is the response times or the throughput or the resource that utilization so we'll first identify the performance goals and then we'll identify the non-functional requirements so we'll gather specific requirements such as acceptable response times the maximum load levels and performance metrics and then finally the service level agreements where we understand the slas that the application needs to meet for example that you are if the SLA is something like you have the response time for this particular transaction has to be three seconds. That is an SLA, and you you must uh, you must be able to achieve 1,000 hits within a particular amount of time. That is another SLA, and uh, if the CPU utilization should be less than 30 percent, the memory utilization should be le the utilization should be less than five percent. That is an SLA. So these are some of the examples of SLAs. So what is the output or what is the outcome of the requirements gathering, which is you will have a documented performance requirements and the objective. So that's your first uh, document you'll have at the end of your requirements gathering. And moving on to the second part, which is the planning and designing. So what is the objective of planning and designing? So you will develop a detailed performance test plan. And what all the activities do you do? So in test strategy uh, is the one that we do uh, in this uh, phase in the planning and design. So where we define the approach for performance testing and we include what type of tests do we run, whether it is load, stress, endurance, or all three, and what are the tools that we're going to use for doing the testing. And coming back to the test plan, so we'll create a test plan which includes scope, its objectives, the timelines, the resources, and the risk management. So this, again, is an important thing which you must tell them, tell the interviewer during interview, because all this comes in the planning and designing phase. And then finally, the workload modeling where you identify the user scenarios and the workflows that will be simulated in the test environment. So you do test strategy, test planning, and workload modeling in the planning and design phase. And finally, you'll get a comprehensive performance test plan. And then moving on to the third phase of performance testing lifecycle is the environment setup, where you prepare the test environment. And when it comes to the activities, so you will set up a test environment, which is closely mimicking the production environment. And in case if you have, already an environment setup, then you're good to go to the next step where you will have to prepare the data, the test data, which is needed for executing the performance tests. And then the tool configuration where you have to install and configure the performance testing tools. So in this third phase, in the, in the environment setup phase, you'll have to set up the test environment, you'll have to prepare the test data, and then you have to configure the performance testing tool. And the output of this particular phase, the environment setup is you will have a ready to use test environment. 
and this is needed for the next phase which is the test script development where you are going to create and validate the test scripts so you have to develop the scripts to simulate the user interactions and workloads and you have to add variables to the scripts by parameterizing the inputs and then the correlation we have to handle the dynamic data which is written from the server that will be reused in subsequent requests so as part of the script development you have to, uh, in the phase of test script development phase you have to create the scripts you have to do the parameterization you have to do the correlation and with that at the end of this phase you have to validate and make sure the tests the scripts are functional and they're working fine and moving on to the fifth phase which is the test execution where you will run the performance tests but what are the activities you do before that so the baseline testing is what you'll start with so you have to conduct the initial tests to establish a baseline for performance metrics and coming to the load testing you have to gradually increase the load to the specified levels to see how the system performs and moving on to the stress testing again the objective is to increase the load beyond the expected levels to identify the breaking point and moving on to the endurance testing where you have to run the system under load for an extended period of time to identify the memory leaks and any other issues and the last one which is the spike testing where you have to apply sudden and extreme increases in load to observe how the system handles sudden spikes so in the phase five in the phase of test execution where you will be executing baseline testing load testing stress testing endurance testing and spike testing and what else what is the outcome of this phase is the performance test results and moving on to the sixth phase which is the monitoring and analysis where the objective is to analyze the test results and monitor system performance and moving on to the activities where you will have to do the real-time monitoring where you have to monitor the system resources such as cpu memory disk input output network during the test execution and coming back to the result analysis where you have to analyze the collected data to identify bottlenecks resource utilization and any performance metrics and finally the performance tuning where you have to identify the areas of improvement and suggest optimizations so what's the outcome of this monitoring and analysis phase is you'll have a detailed analysis report and performance tuning recommendations and with that you'll move on to the next phase which is the reporting where you have so the objective of the reporting phase is to document the findings and share with stakeholders and what are the activities do we do so we do create detailed performance test reports that include findings graphs and charts and we'll provide a conclusion based on the test results and recommended actions and finally we'll share the report with stakeholders and we'll discuss the findings of whether we are going to sign off for the release or not and in case if we do ask to do a retesting yes that's the next phase of the performance testing life cycle which is you're going to do a retesting so where you will be verifying the improvements and ensure the issues are resolved and how will you do that so you'll apply the performance tuning and optimizations based on the analysis and you will rerun the performance test to ensure that the changes have the desired effect and no new issues are introduced and finally the verification phase where you will verify that the performance goals and the SLAs are now being met which is you're going to retest again and see whether the changes have meet the SLAs and the outcome is we are going to we, had, we do have to have a validated performance improvement so overall the performance testing life cycle is an iterative process that ensures the application can perform well under expected and peak load conditions and each phase yeah we all know so every phase is very critical for systematically identifying and addressing performance issues and they all lead to a more robust and reliable application so we, by following this structured approach we can achieve optimal application performance and a better user experience so if you answer in this order you will definitely get placed in your organization and yep very well and again if you follow these steps you can very well improve the performance of the applications and yeah with that i come to an end of this video so until i meet you meet you in our next podcast or in our next video it's bye bye from us and if you're little slash youtube channel bye bye